Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI, and this is a patient who injured their knee yesterday. Younger guy, he was uh, playing around on a scooter, and it slipped out from under him, and he uh, had some funny injury. He didn't know exactly what happened, but we see he has some fluid in the front of his knee here. Here's his kneecap, patella, here's the femur. We see some fluid moderately distended in the anterior compartment. And if we look down to the level of the knee joint, about right here, we see that there's also fluid back here. We go down a little bit further. Now we're on these titrated images. Fluid is bright. We see something very abnormal back here. You see the cachinnous muscles. We can see the popliteus muscle here, and we see the uh, popliteal artery here. You see this band around. This is fluid in the uh, posterior deep space of the knee, and it's like, why is he having all this fluid back there? So, I'm trying to find the etiology for that. We're going to look up here on a sagittal image in a minute, but right here you can see that there is a defect, a communication between the joint and the uh, fluid collection back here. So it looks like a ruptured posterior joint capsule. We're going to try to confirm that on another sequence here. So this is a, a sagittal PD fat set sequence. Luckily the menisci were good. This is the medial side, medial femoral condyle, medial tibial plateau, meniscus, the anterior and posterior horns are looking good. If we go towards the central part, one cut, we see here it is, a ruptured joint capsule. You can see this gap right here. You can see fluid from the joint coming out, going back here through the soft tissues. It's hard to see these joint capsule tears sometimes. But you can see there's a big distance between the base of the PCL here and the joint capsule. And you see this fluid back here. And again, right here, you can see convincingly that there's definitely a hole in there, a tear. So a ruptured posterior joint capsule and extravasation of joint fluid. The other ligaments were good, but there was another finding here. If we look over on the medial side, we see the medial gastinemius muscle coming up here. It attaches over here on the femur. That looks intact. If we go towards the central part, we see that this joint capsule is torn down here. If we follow it up, it's really thick and gray and ill-defined. It's always hard to see, though. But if we come up to the top, it's really thick and gray. It looks like there's a hole up here, maybe. We just don't see it. So the whole midline posterior joint capsule looks like it's torn. Now we're going to go lateral, lateral. Lateral, we're going to look for that lateral gastinemius tendon origin. They can be hard to see, but here it is coming up. We're just going to try to follow it to bone. You say, okay, it was getting close to bone. Here's a little gap here. We're going to go one more cut. Still that fluid-filled gap here. Still the fluid-filled gap. So it should be attaching to the periosteum right here, but we don't see it. Instead, we see this little fluid cleft. Now we're out of it. So this is a torn and stripped lateral gastinemius tendon um, tear. It's torn and stripped from the femur right there. So he has also bone injuries right here in the anterior lateral side, some kissing contusions. We have one in the tibial side here with a little bit of cortical depression by three millimeter. And on the femoral side, another little bone contusion. So this is an injury where he extended the knee and it kissed out here on the lateral side. So a hyperextension, valgus stress injury where it impacted here and then stretched the back of the joint, ruptured the posterior joint capsule. And the opposite side here, uh, I mean, on the same side here, it, it uh, stretched off, I mean, it tore off the lateral gastinemius tendon origin. So, interesting case, don't see those too often. Now, there's one other finding, or not even a finding, uh, normal anatomy here that we don't see too often. And I'm going to start up here at the top. We didn't get all the way up on this one. Actually, I scanned this myself and um, was lazy and didn't start up high enough. But uh, here are two nerves, here's the popliteal artery, vein, and behind them we have... Uh, just above this, we would have had a sciatic nerve, just a single nerve, but now we're down a little bit too low, and it's already branched. So the sciatic nerve will come down here and branch into two things. The tibial nerve, the main one here that follows the tibia, it'll come down below the knee joint, follow the tibia. And also, we have another one over here, the common perineal nerve. So they've already branched. And we're going to follow this common perineal nerve, and this is important anatomy because you know where this goes. Most of the time, you can't really see it very well as a distinct structure. And there's no pathology, but since there is pathology, we can see right along the course here is the common perineal nerve. And the important thing about it, it goes right here by the fibular head. So it goes by the fibular head. So if you have a fracture of the fibular head, you can tear this common perineal nerve. And then as, as it goes down further, it'll branch into, I guess, a superficial and deep component. But right here, it's just the common perineal nerve. And just know that that goes out on the lateral side of the fibular head here. And if there's a fibular <coughs> fracture, look like crazy for this and mention if you see anything wrong um, out there. So thank you very much.